What's good with the YouTube? Y'all already know. Big flock with a convict's perspective. I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with a little bit of energy. What's cracking, people? As you can tell by the title, man, I, I thought about different topics. I put a little post. Nobody really responded. I don't don't know too much about the New York Bloods and Lion King, so I kind of feel out of place speaking about that, man. But much respect to that request. So what I'm going to talk about, man, is someone that we've had on this platform several times, man, who's going to be on my live tonight. I'm going to talk about my personal experience with uh, Badass Stoop. From way back in the days, back in the 90s, in the system, man, when uh, we were both, uh, he was active at the time. So, I just came from uh, San Quentin Reception Center, man. I, I was there longer than I was supposed to because I ended up in the hole. We got off in, into a melee with uh, the Native Americans on the yard, on the upper yard. Yeah, my wife just looked at me right now. I did a whiplash You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I, dropped about, I dropped a couple of those cats in the fight, though. It was kind of fun. And then we were cool afterwards. We were in the hole. It was a hole. It was all I've, I've discussed it before. Whole miss. It, whole miss. Uh, uh, this could have been handled better, man. But uh, anyways, so I, I get transferred to Solano, and I'm with two other homeboys. Homeboy uh, Bam Bam from uh, Livermore and Tomato from Alviso. And so we're, we're on the thing, right? When we get there, they put us all in the one tank. I think they put one Sudanio in there, right? One or two. And the one came in like this, right? He came in like this with a like, swag like that, right? And then as soon as he got in there, he got all spooked. And the homeboy, Bam Bam, was just looking at him like this, like ready to take off on him. All set him. Bam Bam was pretty big, man. It was a beast. About five minutes later, they took that dude out of there because uh, apparently they had just got off the north and south, right? Which Snoop was a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Snoop was the one that kicked that shit off of the Sudanios back at that time when they rushed like five of them rushed 30 dudes. And, um, but I didn't know that yet. So they separate us and all that, right? And uh, next thing you know, um, we're there, we're in the pod. I get transferred to the to one yard, which was a level three uh, facility. I'm there for a couple months. We next thing you know, we go on modified program to where they would let us out for the day room. And then they let the Sudanos out for the day room. We were on lockdown. So, um, you know, I start building four at that time had like about shit, 27 homeboys, no Sudanos. There was none in that in that building. It was all North Daniels. And from there, I was there for about, what, three weeks? You had the homeboy, like, Scooter from uh, Yuba City. Um, homeboy Mac from Sound Hole. Um, a whole bunch of different homeboys. So I'm getting accustomed. This is a whole, little bit different, you know what I mean? And I'm meeting people from different hoods, like Tulare County, Stockton, and Sacra. And I, knew, I noticed everybody there was mainly from Stockton or Sacramento at the time. You know, no big deal. So, we're doing our thing. I get moved from there to the level two yard. When I was there, I ran to the homeboy Littles. A um, couple other homeboys I knew from San Jose and stuff, man, you know. And they were, they were the type of homeboys that were, like, tattooed on their face. But when shit kicked off on the yard, when we were other places, man, they didn't get off, man. So, I kind of was already distancing myself from them a little bit, man. And so, I told the story before when we're walking the yard. Me and Bam Bam. And I countered that, that cat fucking... Uh, uh, some cat that I, I had stabbed in the county jail. Or actually, I sliced him from fucking ear to ear and shit. And in his arm, I ran into him on the fucking yard there. And I confront the dude on the spot when he was with like three or four other white dudes. Like, and they were pretty big white dudes and stuff. Like, you know, the ones with lightning bolts and shit like that. So I confront the dude right there. And I basically was like, what's cracking? Like, you motherfucker told on me. Even though I didn't have the paperwork, I know he told on me. And um, they were trying to charge me with attempted murder. And he got all spooked and shit. Then he came up to me and says, you know, I can get you in the canteen later on and try to be all cool and shit, man. But I wasn't trusting this dude, right? So this is because I just got overrided from the level three yard. They put me on the, the uh, which was the one yard. They put me on the level two. So next thing you know, I get my classification officer. Uh, no, my, my uh, counselor calls me up to the office and just starts ridiculing me, man. Like, what are you doing on a level two facility? You're not supposed to be here. And whoa, whoa, whoa. So they basically gave me the boot back to the level three yard. So basically what happened was is that dude probably told again. So this time when I get over there, I get into to building three. Building three, guess who my celly is? When I get to the door, I'm walk up to the door, and it's dude, I have I had just got a weather bird on top of my head right here when I was there at the, at the uh on the other yard, right? And this dude comes at the door, he's about a little bit just barely shorter than me, and he goes, What's up, you homeboy? And I'm like this, you know what I did? I put my head down like that. What the fuck you think? <laughs> It ended up being fucking rascal, the homie hangout, right? So I go up in the cell. We ended up being cellies and stuff, man. And uh, 
you know, he was politicking. He was, uh, you know, we, we clicked pretty, pretty fast at the time. As cellies, we were both good cellies together, man. And uh, we talked about education, all kinds of stuff. He was driving, I was driving. I had been around a lot of uh, C's and, and bros in the, in the county jail and on the six yard. He, he had yet to be around those type of individuals, but he was, he was sharp, man. You know, I learned some things before. Early in my career, I learned a lot of things from him while I was there on that yard. And then later on, I proceeded to advance where I was at, which was a different level. Um, so, yeah, yeah, but I learned a lot. So I find out who's up in the, in the building. You know I mean, we had uh, Snoop ended up being there. Snoop, a whole bunch of other cats. Joker from Sakta. Tomato was in that building. Carlos from Merced. Popo from Las Banos. Nightmare from uh, Modesto. Um, and some other cats. You know, we had not many. And then there was probably about eight of us and like 23 Sureños. Right? But the Sureños, we weren't tripping off, right? Their shot caller was some dude named Rick. And he was also in the building. The one that had the Yavis for the whole fucking yard. So I started seeing how this individual Snoop was. And I noticed he was very charismatic. And he fucking spoke his mind and he just didn't, he, he was one of those dudes that, how you can say it, he was a uh, uh, very, um, he was with it, you know what I'm saying? But he wasn't like a bully. He wasn't a tyrant. He wasn't disrespectful. That's the one thing I'll say about him. I, I never seen him as far as for the way he handled business, being a YA baby and all that, right? He wasn't, uh, uh. He wasn't one of those ones that just fucking just picked on people because he could. But then I started hearing the stories about him. And when I first looked at him, I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, he looks like the Backstreet Boy. You know what I'm saying? He had these little bangs and stuff like this, right? Bangs and stuff. And you know what I mean? And, you know, he he programmed to the to how a northern was supposed to program. Like, he'd come up to me, hey, Flox, let me post up for me at the shower. Because we have to post up for each other and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, and vice versa, Right. And he just started telling me his his thinking process was he was talking about the yard in general, talking about like that, you know, he told me a story about and so did the other people in the, in the building about how they rushed the Sudanos and somehow Snoop would do shit. and He'd get away. And he got away on, on one of the removals that they did when they actually decided to remove the, the Sudanos. And so we used to play Pinochle. We used to, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying all kinds of stuff. And uh, Snoop was cool. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't know, uh, I didn't know if it was all talk what I was hearing about him. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know if it was just him talking about, about him, you know, being, embellishing who he was or whatnot, man. And as things started coming out, I started learning, like, I started seeing the people he associated with that were fucking really close to him. Like fucking uh, Carlos Espinosa from Oakland, Silos, um, Smiley from North Highlands. These were all individuals that used to rock with him. And Snoop used to say, look, I came from YA. He goes, fuck, I'm ready to ride. He goes, if these dudes are the enemy, my opinion is to get off with these cats. And that was his attitude. He didn't want to push the politics. He felt like that was in our business. If you tried to come at him and ask him to do something for the household, every once in a while he would do a count, but he would say, why don't you get your own people? He would tell people. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't going to be uh, used. You know what I'm saying? So the yard that we were on, there was a lot of basura. Let's just keep it real. There was dudes that were fucking getting heroin out. The leadership was on fucking heroin. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, the, the, leader, the leadership there, he was fucking around with shit holes. And he was exposed to that. You know what I'm saying? So he would call shit out for what it was. But on, on an individual basis, when you push the politics to the side, even back then, he was cool. Him and Rascal got along. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's not my issue. That's not my business. But they used to chop it up all the time, man. But other than that, he really didn't plug in with too many people that were bros. He didn't care if he were, had a status or whatnot. You know, so... That right there, no one seen that him starting the Northern Riders afterwards. You know what I'm saying? He never talked about it. I think that's where he got his uh, Playboy bunny tattooed on him. We were there with individuals like um, Hobo. Him and Hobo were close. You know, uh, Smiley. Um, Daniel Ramos. You know, passed away, rest in peace. So, I think Solano had a big factor in where he ended up going in one of his experiences because Tito was Tito was cool but Tito was a degenerate he was a piece of shit you know what I'm saying he was put the heroin before the gente you know as you guys know when, when me and Rascal got rushed he tried to make excuses for why they shouldn't get off he tried to say we were not supposed to be over there what the fuck you mean we weren't supposed to be over there you were requesting fucking DTRs every fucking unlock so he basically did a cowardice move 
Um, you know what I'm saying? But as far as Snoop's interactions, he did what was expected as a homeboy. He was down for the Norte. He was down for the people. But you could already see on the yard that there was separation there. He'd have his own people kicking in with him. His own little squads, almost like. And they looked up to him. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know the Vato, so I can't. I couldn't really say, like, oh, he's with the shit. He just, you could see how people gravitated towards him. But you looked at him back then, you're like, fuck, who the fuck's this Backstreet Boy? Like, seriously. You look at him, like, you know what I mean? Then you hear about the dude knocking out, like, three or four dudes. You're like, what the fuck? And they're grown men. They're not little guys, because he would never try to fight dudes that were too small. He wouldn't even waste his time with that. He wants someone that's going to give him a competition. And, um, that was, that was my experience with him, man. Like, on the main line, GP, active. He was cool. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no striver or nothing like that. He wasn't no, uh, he wasn't against the cause of struggle, but he wasn't for all the politics shit. He was like, keep your politics away from me. If you want to fuck, we're going to get off, we're going to get off. That was his whole attitude. And he told me that. He's used to YA. Where if they're the enemy, let's get busy then. You know what I'm saying? He, he wasn't with all that peace stuff that was going on. You know? So it was kind of years later when I ran into him. I think it was like 2003. I was bailing out. He was going into my cell, believe it or not, I think. And he was fucking banging on the fucking door, yelling at me, cussing me out, doing all kinds of shit, man. I'm like, fuck, man, what'd I do to you? You know? And I guess this, this at that time, this is when he had started the writers. This is when he had pushed that movement forward. You know, but on a personal thing, man, like, you know, um, before before all the inactive stuff and before he the well he was even when he took his movement it wasn't fucking uh they weren't an inactive SNY crew yet you know I I was just shocked by it you know what I'm saying because I never expected anybody to branch off the Norte and create their own faction like that and I kept on hearing about it over and over again and when I heard it was Snoop it was like I was surprised but then again I thought about what he experienced in Solano right and I thought about and that wasn't a, like, you know, there was a lot of good brothers there, like, you know, DK, you know what I'm saying? Other cats there, right? You know, Rascal, they got along too. But it was the, the dudes that held, held leadership positions. They were all dope fiends. And he's seen it. And there's a lot of people that see shit like that, including myself, that we're playing politics and we're young. We're not going to call people on their shit. He was the one that was calling people on their shit. That's why he was always viewed as, viewed as an enemy. Then he had the bad experience that he had with Spider and fucking K9 and... You know, the situation with K-9 was kind of interesting because K-9 left from Corcoran and I was one of the names he was supposed to look after. He didn't even fucking take care of that. So that kind of told me what type of character K-9 was. Now, we all know about Spider. There's a whole lot of things I can say about that dude from Sacramento, but I'm not even going to go there. Um, but I could see where all these things that he experienced kind of planted that seed. Now, none of us are perfect. We all have human faults and whatnot. And I'm sure he does as well. But, you know, my time with him active... He wasn't no striver, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it real, but he wasn't opposition to the people. If it was time to get off, let's fucking do it, is what he'd say. But other than that, don't push your politics on me. I don't have to. I'm a North Daniel, is what he would say. You know, and I think all the changes kind of uh, that they created kind of pushed him in that direction, man. If they would have probably never started enforcing the old NR uh, uh, stipulations on North Daniels, you probably wouldn't have had as many issues with him. But I think that was pretty much the breaking point, you know. He didn't want to do the bonds to formats. It's cool that he reads them, but he's like, Psh. that was his attitude, you know. Um, other than that, man, you know, the, the man was known for fucking the story about when he beat up that one dude, and then and then uh, uh, broke a fucking broomstick and smashed him with a broomstick. That's all true stories too, man. That's all facts, you know. Um, I wasn't there, but I heard it. The story about him hitting the dudes. I don't. I've heard that he hit the dudes, and I heard that he didn't. Um, but two people told me he did, which was him. Him, and I think it, uh, I think the other head mono told me, but I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? But that when I got there, that melee melee was a big thing they were talking about. So, um, however they did it, you know what I'm saying? But the story about him saying, "Hey, give me two of you guys, and we'll go," is all true. The situation with Pinky, that's all true. Um, you know, when I, like I said, when he became part of the, the rider leadership later on, I was like, what the fuck happened here, man? You know what I'm saying? And it just goes to show that, you know, when you get those who are ready to take a stand, some people gravitate towards that, man. You know, him him uh, 
whether you agree with the dude or not, that took a lot of fucking balls to do what he did. You know what I'm saying? Not many people would do that. You know what I'm saying? And you you got to pay tribute to that. When you get these little dudes that have never been nowhere, now they're it's and why on the level two yards, and they want to talk talk their shit about them. You know what I mean? You're disrespecting someone that puts you guys in place to where you guys are today. Because they weren't, he wasn't pushing that shit on the SMY side. He was pushing that shit on the main line back then, man. Um, you know, I've, I've heard Rascal um, discuss the situation with uh, about, you know what I'm saying, his, his uh, incident. And like I said, Rascal has told the story the same way. I don't have an opinion on it because it's basically a he say, she say thing. I wasn't there and uh, neither was he. So I don't have an opinion on that. I've only looked into what other people say about his character. So um, that's why I don't bring up this subject. But I will say this, and I've said this before, that Rascal has told the same story 20-something years later. You know what I'm saying? I will say that. Uh, other than that, this is my experience with Snoop, you know, uh, on the main line. Why he was GP, how he conducted himself. He wasn't no striver. He, you know, his crew, sometimes they call him strivers. Um, you knew to get him to do anything, it would have to be a very very emergency situation man because he didn't want to be involved in all that shit he's like fucking why am i gonna go keep count let's go fucking smash these dudes we did used to do this guys a couple times see i'd i always go kick it with with a couple of them every once in a while just because i like to express myself out one time uh uh me snoop smiley from north Highlands, puppet from uh southeast stockton and I think one or two other cats, maybe even Rascal was there. We were walking that yard with the fucking, what do you call the M M2P, uh, whatever, the fucking, the super fucking uh, uh, radios they used to have back then where you could put your fucking tape uh, cassettes to it. And we were bumping fucking in the north side. This is how we ride. And we were literally fucking waiting to kick some shit off. So we would fucking walk laps, Snoop, me, um, Celos, Smiley, Puppet, and a couple other cats. You know what I mean? I think Mouse is from Stockton and a couple other cats bumping that shit trying to kick off a riot. I swear to God. And eventually shit started to happen. You had fucking Puppet beat up this one big fucking Weddle. Sudanians. That was pretty big. One of the bigger Sudanians in the yard, but Puppet put hands on him in building four. And then the homie uh, uh, Smiley got into it with some youngster, took him in the cell. And at this time, we were never claiming Northside, right? But when he was be beating up this youngster, they went to the cell unauthorized, unsanctioned. And when he beat this dude up, he grabbed the dude by the neck and he's telling him, say Northside, say Northside. But the dude wouldn't say it though, the youngster. And uh, he, let, he ended up letting him go. But um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on at that time, man. Uh, it was our backyard. So we got away with a lot, man. But that's my experience, man. I thought since I was bringing him on a live, I would have a little bit of discussion about, you know, my personal interaction. I was his, actually his channel in that building three. I was, I was a building channel. So I was building security. So I was running that building. But I would never press up on the homeboys. I let them just, hey, we know what we need to do. Let's do it. I was a kid. I was like, what, like 19, 20 years old. And I'd have to deal with grown men. So I didn't want to sit there and act like I was some type of a super authoritative figure. I wanted people to fucking respect me for what I was trying to do. And it worked out well. Anyways, it's your boy Flacco. I'm out.